Dave Dickinson here from astroguys.com and we are here at the LIGO Hanford Observatory, Gravitational Wave Observatory, right there beyond the distance and that's Rattlesnake Mountain off in there. And this is a gravity wave observatory dedicated to observing and detecting gravity waves. No gravity waves have been detected yet. But Advanced LIGO is scheduled to go online here right around probably by the end of next year. They're doing the commissioning phase right now for LIGO Hanford and LIGO Livingston. And by the end of 2015, Advanced LIGO should be running with 10 times the sensitivity. And hopefully they'll be able to detect gravity waves up here at the quite a distance. LIGO Hanford facility. You can see down both detector arms here. like up here as I said before. Very cool. Nice view up here. Nice day. This is a prototype. They tested it at MIT for a couple years. Um, but it's uh, they used it to develop the control system so they didn't need to put for advanced like masses in yeah. it. Um, so it just has these metal dummies instead but in the production units this uh, third stage mass right here would be a hundred pound piece of glass yeah there would be two the, the sides of it would be flat uh -huh. and there's glass we call them ears that get bonded onto the sides and then you weld two glass fibers on each side that are about 60 centimeters long and those glass fibers run straight down to ears that are also attached to the side of the mirror and that's how you hold the mirror up. So these would be sitting on advanced LIGO at the, at the end of the arms or in the center? In, at the end of the arms and then in these interior chambers that are adjacent to the beam splitter. These are the four most delicate locations okay. in the instrument. He ran this one and these were the first gravitational wave detectors mm -hmm. where they, they had yeah, tried with the big test Yeah, he was the one that balls. opened the experimental field by uh, building these big bars. Uh, he kept... So is that solid iron through that? It's aluminum. Aluminum. Oh. In isolation units. Okay. Uh, we call them ISIs, internal seismic isolation. Very so cool. you might be wondering, well, Dale, didn't you tell me that all your advanced LIGO stuff is installed? And in fact, it is, but um, when, it, when LIGO was first constructed, the NSF grant made provision for three detectors. Okay. And we had two of those here at our site. And, uh, and they were named H2 and H1, and H2 was two kilometers long. Yeah. That's why when you look at an aerial photograph of our site, you see these substantial buildings halfway down the beam line, mm -hmm. and they don't and have those in living part of the it's LIGO. Yeah. So you've got all the Max in here now, and uh, basically the the heart and control room of LIGO Livingston or Life of Hennifer. <laughs> Very cool. All right, I am suited up and ready to head into the heart of LIGO Hennifer. It's just really stunning because we have these portable clean rooms all over the place. Yeah. And so the whole space is, is clean room. But for additional cleanliness when we take a door out of the vacuum chamber, uh, we always have these auxiliary clean rooms that we use um, when, when the Internal, system interesting. Open. And so for four years, these things have been out here with the, all of their fans running all the time. And now a lot of them have been shut down. When I was at the one in Livingston, I think they were taking data at that time, so we never even got in this close. Yeah, so. during operation, uh, the lights are off out here, uh, the phones are off, there's no computers running, uh, personnel are not allowed to go onto the instrument floor. We keep it as wired to do just <laughs> global orchestration. Uh, you got to have all of the photodiodes getting signals. It, it looks ironically like a beer brewing operation. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, I heard my boss say once, you know, if we blindfolded you and just dropped you in here and didn't tell you where you were, you might have a, a brewery or a water treatment plant. Yeah, 
it's kind of like one of those like name this photo like just show <laughs> like show like this here it's like where is that from <laughs> that, that would actually be kind of cool so when this tube section goes through the wall of the building down here then uh, it's the arm that points off towards rattlesnake mountain yes and uh, the arm that we were looking at straight on when we we're on the overpass it's perpendicular out of that this is looking down on the heart of LIGO. We were talking about earlier, it's amazing how much they have to account for to make this operation work. Transmission is going to come this way. This is the, the, the other arm. path that went under our feet when we were out on yeah, the Yeah, we were path. over the top of this one. And then when you get the reflections, when the light comes out of the fabric Perot cavities and comes back to the beam splitter, the two exiting beams that we want to interfere with each other to measure the signal, they're going to go down that way and land in those chambers at the end of that run. Yeah. So the fringe vibrates, you can get it out as audio. <laughs> That's too cool. As long as the vibration is in, you know, the range of frequencies of human hearing. So if I pluck the rubber band, you get the, whoops. It's giving it as audio. You get the note out of the speaker. And, and we can do this on the large end.